met a gypsy. To talk about the bikes again, so that 500 era, like, I think for you to, to do what you did, just ridiculous. Like, five, five on the trot on some of the gnarliest machines that will probably ever get ridden. No electronics, like, crazy power that you know there's i listened to some stuff where you say that right before braking the thing would just like pick up the front wheel and it like it was a real they were a real animal to to ride how the fuck do you ride one in the wet yeah uh towards the end there they did have a couple of settings that you'd you'd uh you'd um with just ignition uh retard the ignition and, and so on which make it a little bit doughier but <clears throat> <clears throat> it's just understanding the power on the bike really so the today the tires are a are, are great um suspension's great but um equally back then the tires we were running were pretty good you know nothing compared to today but i mean for what we had so so as long as you get some feel out of it it was all right you just needed to be careful with the throttle and <laughs> yeah. and um and with the two stroke you always needed to keep it in the power so and especially in the wet because once the thing would spin mm. you'd never keep up with it so you needed to use the clutch as well to, to disengage the, the 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 rear wheel otherwise the thing would just keep spinning so um yeah so the, i enjoyed the wet but uh, but it was always the 500 plus being so light mm. so the lighter it is and the more rigid it is the less feel you have so you know initially the thing uh, we'll put a little the the 250s production bikes road bikes that i was racing in 87 were heavier than the 500s i was racing in 89 so you know, so, wow you know with, but now you've got uh, the, the 589 probably had 170 horsepower was a, and uh, and was 100 and uh, 115 kilograms that and, is crazy <clears throat> and they um and the 250 Proddy bike was probably about 145 with about 35 horsepower. You know? Dude, that is so, insane. So, uh, and then they added some weight to it um, for 91 because uh, the 250 Cedo Pons came in in 1990 and kept crashing. He was a 250 world champion in 89. He opted on a Honda in, in 90 and um, kept crashing them all the time. So he was part of a, 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 a manufacturer type board yeah uh for the for the um to, to to work out the specifications of the bikes going forward and they added 15 kilos to the bike so they became 130 from uh from 91 Still onwards nothing, eh? so but uh 128 without a gas tank so they'd measure yeah. them without a gas tank so the gas tanks were 30 liters of fuel yeah so um but um but that become more difficult then to stop the, the, again the side angle yeah. the, the, the side grip was worse because again now i got more weight wanting to go that way and so it took a while for things to actually go quicker than they were in 1990 yeah yeah but um but yeah the um the the rigidity of the bikes is they're really rigid and um because it's it's built to just like a formula one car they said there's a moto gp bike it's built just for the racetrack it's not a super bike yeah. which was intended to be a street bike and give you plenty of feedback and whatever else so you've just got no feel and then the lighter it is there's no feel as well so so that's the, when i was saying earlier about understanding the 500 it's a completely different concept and nothing that yeah. i'd ever ridden before it, whereas all of a sudden you just can't feel anything underneath you you know it doesn't want to turn you know because it just uh, it just doesn't do anything what a typical bike was doing so you've got to sort of work out different uh, ways of of getting on top of it and then equally a bit bit with the wet so you need to get that feedback of yeah uh, of, and that sort of comes with a bit of experience and then uh, and then also uh, just a lot of good guessing yeah <laughs> and then uh and um and having having good guys around you to understand the the the, the suspension settings and and uh, power settings so uh, it's uh, but 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 the 500 very very uh, very very good fun bike to ride once you understand it <laughs> and how hard was it to convince honda to make it slower for you because it was 96 it was pretty wild and then 97 they slowed it down a little bit for you and then the, the bike actually got better as they slowed it down was that like a hard conversation to have with honda or were they pretty on board um the, yeah well the engineering side of the, the engineers just want to engineer and build stuff you yeah know, 
and for, for HRC back in that point in time and probably still the same they're all young engineers so before they put them in the real world at R&D they make all their mistakes at the racetrack they can get away with this type of thing so so they're all young engineers <laughs> they're just keen and they're keen and they change them out Honda change them out every three years so, yeah right you know so there's while I was there I actually was able to, to convince them to keep a couple of key guys because yeah. You know, at some point in time, some year from year to year, the bike could be completely different. It's like, what happened to this thing? Yeah. So, um, and it's just a new, new engineers, new ideas. So it wouldn't be an evolution. It'd just be a new bike. So, and because Honda was fairly new, like to MotoGP, right? Like when uh, they, they'd been in and then they left and then they'd come oh, back. Okay, so, yeah. but I mean, they'd been around racing since since way back when. So, and then, but they came in, I think, with a four stroke. Uh, so I think '83 with uh, with Freddie Spencer, they won their first 500 cc championship. Yeah, but I think '82, okay. '81, around that the late the late '70s, they didn't. Um, I don't think they were competing. They were in the '60s and yeah. maybe early '70s, and they had success. And um, and but then Yamaha, Suzuki, and MV Augusta, and all these guys, and then Honda come back in around about '80, but with a an NR an oval piston. Uh, four stroke thing which never really worked yeah you know and there was the press nicknamed it never ready I guess it was a, <laughs> but but then they outlawed it when when they did finally get this thing going they um a whole there was, it was like a v8 but uh but only four cylinders you know it was um but so then while this thing was sort of they were still evolving this thing they started with the three cylinder t- uh, two stroke and and you know honda honda near honda as it uh um, engineering companies where you see even well they won the formula one championship last year yeah you know i think mercedes and uh, and honda are probably the two best uh, uh technologically speaking companies out there so when they put their mind to something it's quite yeah, good they make even, it happen and even two stroke the two stroke technology that they had and also the carburation system that they had everything was was perfect but um <clears throat> but but yeah honda went and they stayed and they've stayed uh, since 83 to today and i think if if Honda were to pull out, Yamaha would pull out, and then everyone else would pull out. But um, yeah, you know, I think that uh, I think before the old man Honda died, I think that was the thing. You know, racing's part of his blood, yeah. and then um, so we're gonna we're gonna stay racing. So you know, so hopefully, hopefully uh, Honda stay in there for a while because I think they're the backbone to the sport at the moment. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.